Hello and welcome to the official Watchers YouTube channel here at Jardin du Mayfair, heaven on earth for the watch enthusiast. I am so excited and proud to be bringing you what is probably our 17th world first this year. So we on this channel are on quite the run. Thank you for supporting me so much. And I want to say this, our tech team tell me that up to 76% of you guys aren't subscribed. So please tap that button. It would mean the world to me. If you can subscribe, I can make this channel viable and keep coming fresh and hot with all these world first watches. So what have I got today? It's the Audemars PK Royal Oak double balance wheel open worked in yellow gold. It's the 15407 BA. It came out at the same time as the black ceramic with the rose, which I'm also so proud to say is up and live on our channel now. So check that out after this one. Let me know which one you prefer. Okay, let's get into it. I have to say that despite my very heathen preference for stainless steel, Steel, there is no better feeling than closing the clasp on a solid lump of 18 karat gold that drapes around the wrist thanks to a fantastically engineered silky bracelet. I would hope that the last four words in that sentence bring the Audemars PK Royal Oak immediately to mind, as there really is no other bracelet like it in the industry, particularly when delivered in a decidedly opulent and heavy metal. This is the AP Royal Oak Double Balance Wheel Open Worked 15407 BA, and it makes me feel like a pharaoh. Being full gold, it is a hefty piece, but its 41 millimeter stature draws the weight evenly across the wrist, making it exceptionally comfortable to wear, not quite so comfortable that you don't feel its presence, but you won't increase your biceps as a result of wearing it. It's a slim watch at 10 millimeters thick and wears closer to 42, 43 millimeter watches due to the angular case and integrated bracelet. Heavy and for me, I love big pieces, and this is a feature of the entire model line. The integrated end pieces draw out the length of the watch to 54 millimeters. It is broad, balanced, and as ever, with AP, a drop dead gorgeous mix of brutalist design, satin brushwork, and ultra precise mirror finish polishing to reflect every angle to the point that this thing positively glistens when you move your wrist. More so than steel, which is strange given that the finishing is identical but seems to be dialed up to 90 thanks to the use of gold. The case is AP's signature royal oak shape with its Genta design diver's helmet inspired bezel which is attached to the case using eight white gold bolts that pass through the body and bed into the case back at the rear. These bolts hold the sandwich case construction together as it's a three-parter featuring bezel, mid case and case back. Case flanks are satinated with a polished bevel and a hexagonal screw down crown continues the geometry as its shape matches the that of the bezel bolts. The dial is the glory feature here, to the point that the model is actually named after it. First thing of note is that this has been NAC treated. NAC stands for N-Astiseline, which is probably best not trying to pronounce, but I've given it a go. Nonetheless, it's an electrolysis treatment that results in the anthracite or slate gray color. This finish offers a readable contrast for the polished and loomed gold hands, which are easily discernible at a glance against the dark background, as well as decoratively highlighting the untreated parts of the movement, such as the golden bridge and balance wheels. I don't know about you guys, but I prefer this to the rose and it suits me 10 times better. The movement is Audemars hand finish, in-house caliber 3132, a 35 joule automatic skeleton movement, which has a second balance wheel and spring that increases mass and inertia to offer more stability and precision. It's a technical way of saying more accurate timekeeping which is what we're all here for. Power reserve is approximately 45 hours, so it's not going to make it all the way through the weekend on the nightstand, but the simple answer to that is 
wear it. Guys, as always, I'm most interested in what you think about the watch. I'm sold on it because, as I said earlier in the review, for me, this suits me much more than the Rose. I've always loved the Rose, but it just doesn't look good on me. I've never been able to pull that watch off. And here is my answer. The yellow gold is the old school daddy. And I really, really like it. Now, I did say in the black ceramic with the Rose that that was my favorite release of 20. 2024 from AP. I think I'm sticking to my guns on that one. However, there is something dramatic that I need to say about this, and it's that it's nearly 105 grand cheaper at the time of recording this. So this one's coming in at 165,000 pounds. Now, this is actually value for how much of an insane watch this is. I think that when you wear this watch, it competes with watches at 250, 265, no problems. So, you know, there's something to be said about that. It's not eye-watering for what it is. And as I said, from the Rose perspective, perspective, hmm, yeah, that's an expensive watch, isn't it? Because the black ceramic is very hard to get. We've only had one, um, but these are around and 165,000 pounds. What a beautiful piece. Let me know what you guys think. Thank you so much for joining me.